Welcome to this podcast on digital responsibility. There's a vibrant community across the world at the moment driving forward corporate digital responsibility, which includes a range of aspects from digital ethics, digital for the environment, sustainability, digital well-being, inclusion, accessibility and more. My name is Rob Price, one of the founders of Corporate Digital Responsibility back in 2017. If you'd like to know more, have a look at the website corporatedigitalresponsibility.net. Welcome to episode 12 of the Digital Responsibility podcast and I'm delighted to be joined today by uh, Johnny Shipp. Um, Johnny, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, hello. Thanks Thanks for having me on. Um, I'm, uh, I'm in Brussels, speaking to you from Brussels. I'm a social entrepreneur, management consultant in uh, strategy and technology and public affairs. Um, I have re- I founded the Internet Commission and we'll, we'll, we'll talk more about that. It's after a, a career of 14 or so years with, with uh, O2 and then Telefonica Group, um, looking at di- what we call digital confidence, working on leading uh, digital confidence and issue, uh, issues and um, initiatives which re- across across Europe um, and beyond. So safety, data, privacy, security, regulation and other corporate affairs issues. I, I, as a young man, I studied anthropology and I've had a long standing interest in corporate culture and organizational culture. And really I've been looking out for that along my way. And that one of my, you know, recently that's, that, that's a big part of my interest as well as the digital responsibility piece. And I see them coming together um, in what I'm doing. That's great. And, and of course, it's brilliantly aligned with some of the work that Christopher and I did in the past, where things like digital well-being and privacy were a key part of how we defined um, corporate digital responsibility. So, so tell me a bit more about the, Inter- in, the, the Internet Commission itself in terms of kind of its goals and how it operates. So it started in earnest in 2018. Um, and I had sort of the support of colleagues at LSE, Media and Communications Department, and also WIRA, which is Telefonica's startup accelerator. Um, and the idea, as well as really to, for me personally, to continue um, to, to make a contribution in this field of digital confidence and to continue to work on the issues was to, was to see whether we could make uh, a contribution to reversing what I saw and I think many others saw as a negative cycle of trust issues in online uh, and the response to those trust issues being sort of knee-jerk regulation by outrage um, and the response to the knee-jerk regulation by outrage being really only tactical uh, from organisation and the whole cycle just not really making any difference to what were obviously problems. Um, so, so the, the, the idea is and was, you know, can, can there be a more positive cycle? Can we get beyond this regulation by outrage, which is sort of born of, 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 a, of a certain kind of need to respond by politicians and regulators? And I think, you know, th- this is not... Uh, this is not an un, unknown thing. This is going on. This new, this new idea is to be more strategic about regulation and more strategic about how to how to engage with these issues. Our our contribution as the Internet Commission is to come up with a way of bringing better evidence um, to regulators, to but without but in a way which is positive and collaborative with with organisations. So independent evaluation to drive a positive cycle of digital responsibility is what we set out to do. In the course of, of I suppose, evaluating the behaviours of, of these platform providers and in, um, I suppose, in guiding what good or bad um, practice might look like for those organisations, how have you contended with um, the almost the purpose behind these these platform providers because I suppose a purist view is that they bring a marketplace or a platform uh, for people to utilize and it's up to those people how they utilize it 
versus an alternative view which says that platform provider is the the police the the watchdog for content that happens on that platform and um, how have you how has the internet commission really i suppose evaluated what the purpose of a platform organization should be i think um you know my view is that we look at or look at these organizations as organizations rather than platforms and so as an organization i mean you may be operating a platform but as a as an organization you have a role in society so you have to think about what your product is that you're operating and the impact of it so you know so that, and then so what are the particular things about a platform let's say that that may have a, a an impact on society where is the impact and of course then if you think about that you know we're into a discussion about how decisions are made about online content conduct and contact and that was the sort of that's moving from like the big vision of the internet commission to what specifically are we asking about that was how we focused on got to our focus on last year and we're widening it now but our initial focus is very much on content moderation and so what I'm sort of saying and what we've been working on is the link between the the organization, the, the, the role of the organization in society and its social impact, its corporate responsibility, if you like, um, and the very specific practices and processes which are, exist in a platform and are there to, to, to make it work, but also to make it work in the way that the organization wants it to work and hopefully thereby to have a positive impact. So we, I mean, so we started by um, looking at these issues of, of content moderation, how, and big issues, you know, how do you, so to your point, how do you balance freedom of expression and, and privacy uh, how, and safety? Um, how do organizations do that? But they have to balance them. They can't just, I think, say, you know, it's, it's people how to behave because they, they, they are in the end an organization that has, has responsibilities as an organization so they have to think about their product like any anyone putting out a product um, so there was work obviously going on and this bit is not a, not, not a, a new topic but there was a big thing in uh, 2018 that was announced which is the Santa Clara principles on transparency and accountability and content moderation and so we took that as a starting point and um and built our evaluation framework to incorporate this so the first thing we did is said well also what are the questions that we might want to ask of organizations and th which would which would help us to look at content moderation but also taking on board these sort of two really important concepts that I think I've already alluded to, but procedural accountability, that it is about the processes um, at work within these organizations, not necessarily wholly about the outcomes, but it's about you know, what, what processes are in place and how, how well are they working or not to some extent. And then about the culture that surrounds those processes, the, the, the culture of the organization. So procedural accountability and ethical business culture are two kind of key concepts for me in, in terms of our work. We used our, developed our framework and we used the, the first framework during 2020 to work with uh, four brands, three organizations. We worked with BBC, Sony PlayStation, Tinder, Meetic, which are both brands from Match Group and uh, a small uh, social media service called PopJam. Um, and we gathered data from each of these organizations about their, the practices that were adopted um, that had to do with the physical and, and mental well-being of users and staff, but also how the processes they have, which um, which tackle harmful and offensive content, online abuse, bullying, fraud, misinformation, these kind of online harms uh, that are very much um, in, in, the, in the frame of some of the regulatory discussion. Um, so after we sort of get, gathered, the, gathered the evidence and um, went through a process of 
preparing individual case studies with each of the brands. So we had this three-step process for, uh, for developing the report. Um, the first two steps were very much behind closed doors, very much between us and the companies. And that was uh, an individual case study, which in itself, we think allowed the companies to do a kind of self-evaluation. And, and then we, we combined the case studies. We did some redactions and we combined the case studies to form a joint case study and had a knowledge sharing exercise within the cohort. And then as a, as a final step, we turned that into a public report. But all along um, in our analysis, we were using uh, we used a maturity model to try to evaluate each of the, pro the trust and safety processes that we looked at to try and evaluate them in terms of how, um, what, how they evidence a uh, ethical business practice. So from a sort of on a scale of one to five, from you know one where which is an immature kind of approach, let's say, where uh, the social impact is disregarded to a stage five, which would be a kind of pioneering approach where where um, the organization it's the process is evidence that the organization is setting out uh, to be a game changer in terms of social impact. We use this maturity model to evaluate the extent to which different processes were indicative of a culture of digital responsibility. Importantly, we weren't placing the organizations on that scale, we were placing practices. So each of those organizations may have, well, did have a range of practices across uh, which were, sat across the scale. Um, but that allowed us to get some insight, I think, into what was driving the organization in relation to these, these, these practices. It's interesting because as you've talked, um, I'm, I'm reminded of the uh, ethos fund that defined seven principles or seven guidelines, if you like, for digital responsibility in the work they've done in Switzerland. So they're an investment fund around managing pension funds. And the first of those was must have a digital responsibility code that was kind of publicly available and, and, and anyone could see that was the pointer to how that organization did behave and, 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 and indeed the responsibilities they took alongside some of the things that you talked about there. Um, the, uh, we, we should give a plug to the report. So the accountability report was published in January this year, I think. How, how was the reaction to that? What, what, what did people say and, and how have you been able to build on that over the last couple of months? Um, well, you can you can read the report for yourself first of all at, uh, uh, on our Internet Commission website, uh, which is inetco.org forward slash report, um, and and we're still gathering kind of feedback from all the people that um, that have downloaded it and interested in reading it, and would love to kind of hear more from from your listeners and others about you know about about what they think. Um, the biggest uh, endorsement so far, I think, is is the renewal of of some of the partners. So, um, you know, the, the 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 companies that participated in the report, uh, Match Group are are going to participate again this year, and we talk about the slightly expanded um, uh, evaluation framework that we'll be using. At Sony has also um, renewed their participation and. Um, we're also welcoming Twitch into the process this year, so we're very excited to be working working with Twitch in the in the coming months. Um, the, I mean, the, the real so it's, it's great that more companies are coming in and renewing, and so I hope I assume that means that they're seeing the value in it. Um, and also, I mean, they have. I think it's also about confidence in in it being useful going forward because it's a fairly kind of long-term game for for everybody i think but the the the, the individual uh, discussions with the regulators are perhaps also really important so we've been engaged uh, with ofcom and with the people at dg connect and we're starting to engage more in the us as well and i think they will be there will be conversations which, for which the, this year's report will be very instructive, but we'll also be looking for where, you know, where we need to adjust uh, in future cycles. So that's the kind of conversation that we're, we're having. But I think that the reception among those groups has, so far has been, been positive. 
Um, they've, in fact, to be fair, they've been encouraging all the way, but they've put, I think the, the first report has been, been well received. That's, that's fantastic that you've you've got more buy-in to it and it must be great to have those new new platforms on board because presumably as you 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 take on more people and you you expand your network then it, you learn more along the way and that maturity model will increase um, I was wondering I was meaning to ask you Johnny um, often when uh, the media and um, uh, government uh, organizations talk about these these organizations providing these um, products um, that they, they and they talk about moderating content they almost say these findings need to better um, manage and govern their own rules and regulations on their own um, platforms which I find odd for a, a public sector organization like the government or the EU to say this this third party, this private organization should run their rules better over our citizens in the digital world. Um, do you see any scope for standardization and getting these organizations to adopt a code that's used across the world? Or, or do you think it is in the scope of the, um, the, the, the specific provider to have their own approach on a platform by platform level? Might be a difficult I think question people to do answer. tend to people do tend to lock into the idea of the code and everything needing to be the same, but it's hugely difficult. I mean, we've seen well even within our our small cohort in the first year, the companies involved are so different. So, whilst they've got challenges in common, and they both and they definitely have to make decisions about content, and they are still and they're tackling problems, but coming from their own directions, they're running very different kinds of businesses, and so to try to have one set of overall rules for such a diverse range of businesses, even within our small, small cohort. But if you think about all the different businesses uh, and types of businesses that exist in, uh, and have a relationship with even ones, if you even narrowed it down to those that you would say had a relationship with online content, there'd still be a massive range of different activities. And, and so to have a single code, I mean, it's difficult. I think there are some hard edges like um, I mean, we've been looking at the, we've been in our uh, next iteration of the framework, we've been uh, incorporating some, some, uh, some of those hard, like there's a, there's a, a voluntary principles to counter online child sexual uh, exploitation and abuse, which is a, 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 a um, agreement between the, um, I think it's, it's the Five Eyes English speaking world group, but it's a, it's a, they're, princ they're still principle based, but there are some kind of, if you're talking about child sexual exploitation and abuse, there are some, obviously some things that really need to be, to be red lines. But even there, you know, there are different, I think there are different approaches by yes. service. And um, so, uh, but, uh, so I actually think that, you know, it, the, the, it's right to say, and this is the procedural accountability point, uh, really what's, what's most interesting is our companies following what they say they do um, and so and have they got something that they say they do I mean at a very basic level if they do they have some principles and do they then uh, put them into practice and and so and that's the I mean that's I think the, the starting point um, certainly of our work we we, we, we we haven't set out and neither could we set out to really make a judgment about whether the rules that a, that a big company puts in place are the right ones or not. But what we could have a judgment about is the extent to which those rules are being well implemented and also the ways in which they're implemented and whether that would point them in a, in a sort of good direction. Yes. I guess it's the the, the grey fields in between the hard edges that cause the issue. Um, when you're expecting an organisation like Facebook to determine whether or not breastfeeding on their platform uh, photos of that is sufficient versus um, hate speech, or, or they, they often form the fuzzy edges that it, it seems odd to ask an organisation like Facebook to say whether such a thing is right or wrong. Um, I've always found that quite an interesting tension within these these communities it 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 does touch on i guess that general area that 
I've talked about a few times, which is, I mean, it's interesting that the, the organizations that you talk about are, are international organizations, is, is the first point. But um, understanding, for any organization to understand legally what's right, uh, what the regulatory framework is, and what the ethical appropriate behaviors are, per local country, UK, for example, per region, Europe, for example, per globe, um, or, or indeed per different regions in the globe, it is, is just really complex. Where it's in the gray areas, it's very easy. I, I, I would hope it's very easy at the extreme levels. Um, do you, obviously, one of the things that's happening in Europe is the uh, arrival of the Digital Services Act, uh, which, which plays out in this area specifically. Um, have you got any thoughts as to kind of the impact that might make, uh, certainly in with a European lens at least? Well, I think it will eventually it will improve online exp online experiences. It will take some time, and you know, it, it, it will there will be some big challenges for both the policymakers and the and the tech companies along the way um, and I think there is a lot of the you know the digital package which is a digital services act digital markets act but other other instruments as well that are both from the past you know the, the GDPR is the obvious one but there are other things with the digital governance act and there, there are other things around it and I mean it takes I haven't done it. It's going to take a lot of getting your head around where these things conflict and where they overlap. And I think that's the discussion in Brussels and will be for some time. I think it's obviously difficult to introduce rules, uh, you know, that, that keep up with changes in technology. That's the big. That's the big challenge, and they and it needs it needs to be done. I think that there are some people thinking that these rules need to incorporate the possibility of more iterative processes and um, that's interesting um, quite how that will be done in practice remains to be seen I, that's an area that i think internet commission might be able to help with i mean there's this kind of accountability approach and the and the idea of having expert intermediaries that would um you know, would have a deeper expertise than regulators, but, um, but you would and would be able to bring evidence um, to the regulatory setup. So, uh, it, it, I mean, I think this it's needed. The the, the digital package is needed, and um, but of course, the the, the trouble. One of the one of the difficulties is, it, you know, is how do you settle outside of Europe with with inside of Europe and particularly the transatlantic sort of agreement or not. I mean, we see in GDPR that it's been very difficult to, to have an agreement and I'm sure that, that the difficulty will continue, but in the end, it will there will have to be some kind of alignment. Um, so, and, and I think that the idea of, of so some some regulation has to be there and I think, it, I, I, I do think that the end result will be, you know, will be positive for users. And, and I think, in a sense, I mean, I expect there to be more tensions. I mean, we've seen tensions in terms of Australia, uh, as you say, kind of the US-Europe piece. Um, as, as I saw a post on LinkedIn earlier, um, trying to predict kind of what would happen with the arrival of the Trump social media platform, whatever that looks like and whatever that says. Undoubtedly, there will be some uh, evolution, if you like, in terms of the alignment of regulatory position across the world. Um, but there will be, probably be some tension and rocky times to kind of get to that point, I would envisage. is I, I guess finishing up, what, what would you see happening in, in, in 2021 for the rest of the year around uh, what's next for digital responsibility, what's next for the Internet Commission? What are you looking forward to? So I think and I uh, hope we'll, we kind of see convergence of two changes. But, um, on the one hand, the, the digital, digital responsibility subject area and, um, and, and the, the kind of topic and the growing uh, field that, that we're talking about is a subset of, of, 
of corporate responsibility and sustainability more widely. And I think it's the one change that we, we, we might uh, see and hope to see is how digital issues are incorporated into the wider sustainability and corporate responsibility approaches um, and ways of doing things. Um, and at the same time, I think it's, you know, the key to, to getting into a better place is this ever bigger focus on ethical business culture. So a, so strong business culture, positive business culture that can be uh, a catalyst for, for, uh, strong, for organizational performance in terms of sustainability, uh, but also an indicator of strong performance as well. Fantastic. Yes, absolutely. Uh, I think um, that, that business culture is is right at the core of, of a lot of um, the digital responsibility challenges that we see on the horizon um, and something I'm sure we'll be considering in more depth on, on future podcasts. Um, so thank you, Johnny, for your time today. It's been a, a fantastically interesting conversation. We really appreciate your time. Um, but for now, everyone, uh, thank you for listening and you'll hear back from us next week for the next podcast thank you thanks both thank you <laughs>